Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most fundamental concepts in AI, the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. If you're new here, my name is Mons and I've spent the last five years learning and teaching AI and data science. And this is the channel where I share everything that I wish I had known when I started. So let's break down what these terms actually mean and more importantly, when you use which. Let's get into it. So the first thing to know about supervised versus unsupervised learning is are the two definitions. So supervised learning is learning from labeled data. This is like a student that uses flashcards to study for an exam. So they get the word or whatever, and they're supposed to know the definition. And this is one way we can train AI. We give it a hint toward what the answer should be or a number that it can use to guess the price of something or whatever, uh, but it has a hint and the real answer. And that's how, it, yeah, that's how it learns. This is supervised learning. We have a right answer and the machine is trying to predict it. Then there's unsupervised learning, which is analyzing data without labels. This is like exploring patterns in data without knowing what you're looking for. So in the picture down here, here we have classification where we have data of three different natural groupings and they also have a right answer. So <clears throat> these could be apartments, house and and row, row houses on, on a scale of uh, area and price, let's say. Uh, but in the clustering, in the unsupervised learning case, we might just have the points. We don't. We might not know what category they actually belong in. But unsupervised learning algorithms, they can help us find patterns in, in, in the data. So the algorithm here has created three natural groupings just from the distance of between the points. And the examples of supervised versus unsupervised learning um, that you might recognize is email spam detection. So a company like Microsoft, they would collect uh, mail that was warned as being a sp spam. They would look through it, see if it's spam or not. And then they have suddenly a huge database of mails that are spam and mails that aren't. And now they can train their algorithm to recognize these based on previous data. So they, they'll get an email, the machine tries to predict it, predict it, and they'll see if it was right or wrong. And they'll optimize their model um, with this information. Second one would be predicting house prices. Uh, as we've done in previous videos, you get the area of a house or how many bathrooms or how many bedrooms are in a house. You try to predict the price. This is also a question with, which has information which leads to the right answer, which we're after. The third one is diagnosing diseases from medical images. So let's say you get a picture of a, of a tumor or, or a picture of an eye to try to diagnose a disease. In the same way, train an AI to distinguish between these pictures because you have the right answer. For the unsupervised learning, the case is a little bit more diffuse, but let's say you have uh, a database of customers, you have, you're doing an e-commerce business and, and you're doing an e-commerce business and you have this data of all your customers. And now there might be some, some kind of data that you might be able to predict, like let's say how much they're gonna spend in the future, but you can use unsupervised learning to cluster your customers into different groups. Let's say this group spends more on weekends, this group spends more on, on week, weekdays, and these groups aren't really uh, black and white. You might just use these algorithms in order to find these groups. Uh, topic modeling in text. So let's say you just have thousands of thousands of PDF documents and you can run an unsupervised learning algorithm on it and it would cluster the documents in terms of similarity, how much they're like each other, maybe group them. Because there's no right answer, this might be a useful task if you want to see similar documents. The third and final one is anomaly detection in factories. So let's say you have a production line and you have data that runs with every manufactured uh, part or whatever, and then you can you can then use unsupervised learning to find anomalies in this data. So it would just detect where the where the data or the combination of different different data or sensors is is strange or hasn't seen, been seen before. So this is the class. This is the case with the spam. You put the spam email and the normal emails into the classifier, and it learns to sort these out. And let's talk about the key algorithms. So for the supervised learning, linear regression, neural networks, and decision trees are the most common ones or the most regularly known. So all of these, the, the point of all of these is to either predict a number or predict a class membership. So linear regression is good for putting into classes. It's also good for do, doing both of these tasks. Actually, both all of these three uh, do them pretty well. For unsupervised learning, the most common algorithms are the k-means algorithms, which is a clustering algorithm which takes data that looks like this, uh, points on a two-dimensional graph, and we use k-means and 
it finds natural clusters depending only on the location, on the similarity of location of them. The second one is principal component analysis. This is very common when you have very high dimensionality in your data. Let's say you have 15 sensors that capture some, some part of some process and you want to simplify this data to a two-dimensional space instead of being 15-dimensional. That's, uh, that's what principal component analysis it does. It doesn't really have the right answer, uh, therefore it's unlabeled data that you're working with, uh, but it does this very well. Third, we have autoencoders, and these are neural networks that compress and reconstruct data to learn hidden structures. So it's basically a neural network. It takes the data and tries to compress it and then reconstruct it and this process leads it to finding the most essential parts of the data. So let's end with a comparison table. So supervised learning is used when you have labeled data. The goal here is to predict or classify something, to predict a class, predict a number, predict... Uh, yeah, it's basically those two. The output uh, are the guesses that can either be wrong or right. So let's say that we have our email classifying algorithm and it predicts an email as being spam while it is not. There, the guess of that algorithm is wrong. Uh, and for the example, uh, we have the email spam detection and predicting of the house prices. Whereas for unsupervised learning, we have unlabeled data. And the goal of unsupervised learning is to discover hidden patterns or structures. So it's more used as a tool to analyze data that doesn't have the right answer uh, more than to predict anything. And the output of unsupervised learning is often data groupings, as clustering is one of the one of the tasks that un these algorithms are very well suited for. The examples are customer segmentation. You want to separate what, what types of customers are, are where and, and who are most alike, and also anomaly detection uh, in factories or assembly lines. So, and that's the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Please hit the like button if you enjoy the episode and I'll see you in the next video.